Hey, this is Drake Milligan, and you're watching Strike TV. Hey everybody, Brian here. We're at Moe's Place, Katy, Texas. And what's kind of cool is tonight, this says it all. So Mo has a slogan. It says, see the stars of tomorrow at Moe's Place <laughs> today. Tonight is probably, look, I'm a fan, but I'm also a music guy. Tonight's probably the hottest guy in country music right now. Man. Texas born and bred, so I mean, that, you know, that kind of helps. But anyway, and I'm sure if you've had your TVs on a little bit here in the past few weeks, you would know, but without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Drake Milligan. Thank you for having me, man. Brother, thank that's you, some man. Good, that's some big words right there. I don't know about the hottest thing in country music. Well, well, oh, well let's just say, so, uh, so I'm going to be honest with you, and we, I say we have to give shout-outs, credit where credit is due. A great man that I've known for probably almost 30 years, not that we're that old, Adrian Michaels. Yeah. And I will say this, and of course some people say, well, whatever. When Adrian Michaels tells you to tune in and get ready, you do it. I turn on the TV and I come up and I hear this man, if I could only play guitar, I'd play it for you. People go eight crazy. So let's just say AGT. There it is. I'm gonna give credit where the credit's due. So he gets a standing ovation from all four judges. And then of course they call you, they say, hey, uh, you're the new Elvis of country. And so speaking of Elvis, and this is one thing I try to ask people. So when you were seven or eight, you were in a, a burger joint or something? Yeah, burger joint. Dog. And you saw an Elvis impersonator. Yeah. But here's the big question. Do you remember the name of the Elvis impersonator? Yeah, Carlton Hurdle is his name. Yeah. How awesome is yeah, that? Yeah, he's about six feet, six foot tall. I mean, he's huge. Wow. And so as a kid, I was like, he had the great jumpsuits and everything. And I right. saw that and I'm just like, wow, what? is this like i just was so like enamored with whatever that was so i went home and was like you know i thought that was elvis you know and i, wow. I, but I was like well you know the real elvis you know and he yeah. died in 77 and then right. you know show me videos and everything and i just couldn't get enough i went home and looked at every video and everything i could about elvis and you got really good at it so in yeah. school yeah i mean I, I traveled all throughout high school uh that was like my gig uh, yeah. throughout like you know i was a kid from when i was about eight or nine uh, th through high school, that was my gig, was traveling as Elvis and uh, singing his songs. And I moved into the 50s Elvis, you know, I was a kid, I'd, I'd had the jumpsuits and everything, did, did the 70s, and I moved into the 50s stuff. And, and uh, yeah, man, I mean, the, the music is great. It was a great, that, that getting a master class in that music. And, oh, yeah. you know, Elvis was one of the greatest entertainers ever. So, uh, you know, I just spent a lot of years just studying everything he did. And is that when you started picking up guitar, or was it kind of, you saw it and you're just like, I'm all in? It was about that time. I mean, it was all kind of together. I, I started, I got my first guitar when I was about six or seven. Okay. And it was all kind of, it all kind of was, just kind of sparked together. I had, I had a guitar, and then El, discovering Elvis was where I put put it together that, okay, I can, all, I can sing, but I can also, like, entertain. I never right. really put that, you know, together in my mind that, that it's... It, 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 Elvis kind of brought that to me that okay, it's something I can I can do I can I can entertain people like Elvis. You know, it's not just something I can sit around in my room and play or something uh, I do. No, yes, that sounds good. That's good. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I just <laughs> so, uh, is any of your family musically inclined, or do you have anybody that plays guitar or sings? Uh, or? My mom played like saxophone and marching band and stuff, but never oh. really played around the house. We always had a piano growing up. I had an uncle that did dueling pianos, uh, oh, wow. and I was always really uh, just really like enamored with what he did and. and Thought it was so cool, you know. And we'll talk about maybe Uncle Piano Guy. There's a guy named Tony Brown, but we'll talk about him. <laughs> we'll talk about Tony here in a minute. So if we fast forward a few years, so you're talking about Elvis. So are you watching Facebook, or what did you see where they had a? Was there a casting call? Uh, yeah, it was an open. It was there was an open casting call for Sun Records, and uh, I found out about it just on Facebook. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, Drove up there. They said no at first. They didn't want me to. They, 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 I was too young. I was 17 at the time, and right. I was still in high school. I was a senior in high school, and and it's probably around. I think it was Valentine's Day of my senior year. And I drove up and got my foot in the door. And said no, guys, I'm serious. I sent them a bunch of tapes. And they let me come in and, and sing a few songs, and and I did. And they asked me to sing some more, and I right. did. And I sang some more, <laughs> and right. then I did scenes, and then we did a screen test the next day, and. Uh, 
two weeks later I got the call that at the part of Sun Records. So um, I was applied to Texas Tech. I was going to go there, uh, try to get in the music scene over there. Uh, that was kind of my plan. You right. know, was was just to go to all my friends were going to college there. My brother went to school there, and. Uh, you know, I decided I decided to go for the TV show because um, we were going to be filming that summer and then into the next season. So I wanted to be able to go to, go to you know school that semester, that next semester. So you know, I dropped out, finished online, uh, mm -hmm. but I, but I, you know, finished high school online and, and uh, decided that I'd just you know kind of try to make a run of it and and, and use that <laughs> as my college experience. Not too bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know it's kind of hard to decide or whatever, but do you have a favorite Elvis song? Or can you narrow it down to a few? Uh, the one that comes to mind, there's there's a song it's a, from the early 60s, it's from that like Elvis' back era. It's called There's Always Me. It's a great song. And it's, it's kind of got, Elvis in the early days had that real high, fluttery, kind of climbing fatter voice. And then, you know, later he's known for those big operatic. And his voice at the time was kind of in between those. And I just love that song, kind of showcases that whole range. And mm -hmm. It's a great song and it's one of my favorites. So I, I mentioned the name Tony Brown, and if you've done a little music thing, you kind of know that Tony Brown. So tell us how you met with Tony Brown, because that was, as some of us know, Tony actually played piano or whatever, or something, for Elvis. So, and then did Tony get in touch with you or something? Tony saw me on Sun Records. He saw me play Elvis and loved, loved what okay. I did on Sun Records. And uh, he found my email through through the, the head of CMT, actually, at the time. And, and, and <laughs> he, he can make that yeah, call, yeah, right? he made that call. And, and, and uh, you know they got with me, and he wanted me to come play uh, the Governor's Ball. Actually, and uh, he was he was responsible for finding music for the Governor's Ball in Tennessee that year. And uh, he wanted me to come in and play. I, I sang Tennessee Waltz on the show, and uh, he loved my rendition of it. Wanted me to come sing it for that. And so I came in and sang that for him, and, and uh, we kept in touch. And, and uh, eventually, I came back and said, Hey, Tony, I you know I'm kind of sing my own music too. You know, mm -hmm. my play you some stuff. And, right. and at the time, I wasn't you know it wasn't. You know, obviously it wasn't the record we you know have made now, but it was you know the start of it, and he saw something there and, and wanted to work with me. So when did you write your first song? Because you did guitar, sixish or whatever. But so when did you write your first song? Uh, I I messed around with this in high school. You know, okay. I, I messed around with it then. I, I never really was serious about it. And even when I moved to Nashville, you know, I thought, you know, heck, I'm just going to be like one of these guys and get all these great songs in Nashville and. Poof, I'm off the You're there, right? right? Yeah. Um, Instant millionaire, yeah, sign exactly. a record in a week, and you're good to go. <laughs> uh, but I just, I, I got in there and I realized I needed to find my own sound. Yes. I needed to find my own kind of way and, and, and incorporate some of my influences. Uh, you know, like the George Strait influences, but you can't, there's already a George Strait out there. You yes. Can't, you can't do exactly what he's doing. And, uh, and there's already an Elvis, and I can't do exactly what he's doing. So I figured, you know, if I can try to combine some of that stuff. Um, and through songwriting, I really found that. And I just fell in love with it. I was lucky, uh, you know, to sign a deal early on and then and get in with Tony Brown and so I could get in a lot of writing rooms. You know, I've been able to write with Dean Dillon. I've been able to write with Bill Anderson. I've been able to write with legends of songwriting and learn from them. I mean, just really, you know, if you show up and you respect their time and, and bring ideas and, and, you know, they, they'll really uh, take you under their wing and show you how to write a song. And, you know, I've been lucky to be able to do that. Yeah, so speaking of songwriters, a good friend of the show, not going to drop any names, which happened to be the a, a co-writer on your first, I, guess I would call it first single, Mr. Terry McBride. Terry McBride. How course. cool is that? Man, Terry's one of my, uh, now it's like a crazy, he's one of my best friends in Nashville, I feel like. Um, yeah. I've written a ton, of, there's at least three songs on this record that I wrote Terry. Wow. Uh, and uh, man, it's just anytime you know you've been around Terry. Yes, it's a great time just to be around. So yeah. you know, oh, if we yeah. hang out at the house for four hours and write for thirty minutes, then we probably get a good song and we get a lot of good stories too. So he tells um, you, yeah, he tells you Brooks and Dunn stories and shows pictures of the grandkids. <laughs> so and let's talk about it. So of course, as we said earlier, AGT. So you've done the songs you've done so far from from your EP. That was in 2021, is that when it was released? Uh, 2021, July 2021? 21. Okay. Yeah. And I will, if that thing ain't country, well, I can't say it on TV, but if that ain't country, I don't know what is, man. That is just solid from top to bottom. Okay. Now that's out, it's an EP, and you can get it. And we're gonna, so where do they find your, where do they find the tour dates? Where do they find your, Social media. What's uh, your... I'm all over the place. I'm all uh, at Drake Milligan across the board. Okay, all Drake across, Milligan. You know, okay. Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, or uh, DrakeMilligan.com. Okay. You know, Two dates up there. Yeah. So, 
So the songs you played before, and of course I'll probably ask you a question, and I'll ask some of this, another artist the question, since you're going to watch to find out. So I, there will be a finals. Mm -hmm. Do you know what song you're going to perform? Is it I don't know song? yet. Don't I know don't, yet? I don't know yet. Uh, okay. But we're going to decide, you know, I want to do, I want to do something new, I want to do something off the record, so. So guess what? Uh, that means y'all have to tune in and watch and <laughs> vote. Because I put it on Facebook. I got all my 10 votes through on each time. So just to let you know, I appreciate it. So, so let's talk about it. So we talked about the past. We talked about the EP. Coming up September 15th, 14 songs, Dallas, Fort Worth. So tell me, okay, one, I'm blown away. How'd you get, who did you, how'd you get 14 songs? Well, 14, I mean, it, it's crazy. We, we started cutting, boy, we started cutting, uh, 2019 we started cutting songs wow. and uh, and then we had we had kind of the EP ready to go in 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, of course March of 2020 you know what COVID hit and then it was really kind of just as a new artist it was like well I can't do much I can't I can't just release a record out of the ether you know mm -hmm. so I took a step back and and we cut any more songs we went back and you know I got a great record label Adrian Michaels over there you know so supportive and Man, we went back and cut more songs, and we cut some country songs, dude. And we cut all these songs, we, we, we had all these songs, we didn't quite know what to do with them. We cut all these 14 songs, we didn't quite know how to package them together. Right. Um, and it was really credit to Adrian Michaels. We were here in Houston, actually, one day, and at a show, we had all these songs, and, and, and Adrian, we're listening to all these songs, and, and he goes, you know what, your, your music's just like Dallas and Fort Worth. You know wow. how it's just like you got the you got the polished side, oh, oh, and then you've got your honky tonkin' side. Right. And eventually, we we got to lead the songs. We go, man. There's seven of my honky tonkers. I've got a I've got a western swing track right. with Vince Gill and the Time Jumpers on it. You know, and that's oh. how much Fort Worth. How much more Fort Worth can you get oh. than that? You know. And uh, and then on the other side, I've got like sounds like something I do where I rock out a little bit. You know, and I, I've got like kids can buy all night that. That uh, that I can rock out a little bit with. So, did y'all hear? He just dropped the yeah, the song with Vince Gill. <laughs> Sweet, man. I I tell you, I haven't been this excited in years, man. No, thank you. I'm so excited. Congratulations, y'all. Check him out, Drake Milligan at Drake Milligan. Y'all buy the EP, buy the album, September 15th. Watch, watch him. Watch out. So y'all tune in, brother. Thank you, Great. Very thank you, man. Thank you, Joseph. We appreciate you, my friend. Adrian you. Michaels, Tommy, Angel. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. See you next time.